Thank you for joining me. In this video series, I'm going to be looking at the condensed state, that state of matter in which attractive forces have formed and allowed atoms and or molecules to be drawn together. One of the first steps in comparing substances is you want to classify. Classify, classify, classify. Um, the main ones we're going to be looking at are network covalent. Network covalent is an attraction of valence electrons on one atom to the nuclear charge on a neighboring atom. So these are attractions between neighboring atoms. And the key is these are neighboring bonded atoms. That's very, very important when we look at network covalent. Now, for network covalent, what we have is an ongoing array of covalent bonds. So an ongoing array. And things that you could look at to, or to think about to get a picture in your mind are diamond, that's pure carbon, diamond, and graphite. Those are allotropes, um, especially if you are in IB chemistry. You should know that word. Same element, different structures, allotropes. So diamond, graphite, sand is silicon, dioxide, or a series of silicates, um, but they're covalently bonded. Metallic. What we have, we still have attractions. We have positively charged ions in a lattice. So positively charged ions, plus one, plus two, plus three, in a fixed lattice with delocalized valence electrons moving around. That word delocalized is very important, not fixed to a location. But again, we're talking about bonds between neighboring atoms. And then we are going to talk two more. Ionic, this should be a little bit more familiar to you. So ionic is attraction between cations and anions. Again, it's a bond between neighboring atoms. So in this case, there's been an exchange of electrons and then a, an attraction between those. And lastly, we have covalent bonding. And in covalent bonding, we want to call it a discrete molecule. And this is going to be different with the condensed state. Whereas in the other three, we were talking about attractions between atoms, those would be intramolecular forces within intrastate is within a state. What we're talking about are intermolecular between neighboring molecules. Now, one of the most common mistakes I hear students saying is they're going to call these attractions bonds. And I don't want you to fall into that trap. Although one of them is called a hydrogen bond, these are not considered bonds in the sense of the ionic, metallic, and network covalent or a covalent bond. In this case for the dis, di, uh, excuse me, dis condensed state, it's between discrete separate molecules and it's going to be an attraction. Again, we have to have an attraction to have a condensed state. These, by and large, almost exclusively, are much weaker. There are some exceptions, but you would be given data to tell you what those exceptions are. So we will always consider these intermolecular forces 
between neighboring molecules to be much weaker. So inter will be much weaker than intramolecular forces. And then one final reminder before I flowchart this a little bit for you is that it takes energy to break an attraction. So I always say takes to break and it frees energy. Energy is released to form attractions. And that's true for these very strong intramolecular forces as well as these much weaker intermolecular forces between neighboring molecules. Okay, so um, with that introduction as a backdrop, uh, we will be going into Coulomb's Law. Thank you so much for joining me.